Are you ready for some of the most bone-chilling, mind-bending psychological warfare tactics in history? From ghostly sounds haunting the jungles of Vietnam to samurai arrows whistling through the dark skies of Japan, we're diving into the terrifying and ingenious strategies that have shaped battles and haunted soldiers across the ages. Prepare to be shocked as we uncover operations so bizarre and cunning, they have to be heard to be believed. Operation Wandering Soul Operation Wandering Soul was a chilling and psychological tactic used during the Vietnam War, aimed at exploiting the cultural beliefs of the Viet Cong. Picture this, the dense, shadowy jungles of Vietnam in 1970, where silence is suddenly broken by eerie sounds drifting through the air. The U.S. Army engineered these ghostly audio tracks, which were a mix of haunting voices, traditional Vietnamese funeral music, and the sorrowful pleas of the supposed spirits of fallen Viet Cong soldiers. These sounds, meant to instill fear and demoralization, were broadcasted from helicopters and ground units creeping into the dark of the night. The belief in the wandering souls of the dead, who are unable to find peace if their bodies are not buried in their homeland, runs deep in Vietnamese culture. The U.S. military strategists, tapping into this fear, hoped that the operation would lead Viet Cong soldiers to abandon their posts, too terrified by the thought that their fate could leave them to wander aimlessly in the afterlife. Although Operation Wandering Soul was innovative, its effectiveness remains a topic of historical debate. Some reports suggest it may have caused unrest among the Viet Cong, while others indicate that the psychological warfare tactic had limited impact on their morale or movements. What remains clear, however, is the operation's reflection of the lengths to which warfare tactics can evolve, intertwining with cultural beliefs to achieve strategic goals. Japanese Nighttime Whistling Arrows in the quiet, moonlit nights of 16th century Japan, an unusual sound often pierced the silence before a battle, the whistle of arrows known as yazutsu, or hikime, flying through the dark sky. These were no ordinary arrows. Crafted with a small whistle near the tip, they were designed not to strike the enemy, but to send a message. As samurai archers drew their bows and released these whistling arrows into the night, the high-pitched tones served as signals to start the battle or communicate strategic moves without uttering a single word. Imagine standing in the cool night air, the tension palpable, when suddenly, the serene silence breaks with the whistle of arrows overhead, sending chills down the spine of every warrior. This clever use of sound and warfare was more than just communication. It was psychological warfare intended to intimidate and confuse opponents. The effect of these arrows was profound, often shaking the morale of the enemy before the clash of swords even began. This ancient practice tells a story of strategy, courage, and the art of war that has fascinated people for centuries, captivating the imagination of young and old alike with tales of samurai wisdom and ingenuity. Roman Decimation Imagine stepping back in time to the Roman Empire, around the year 100 BC, where the legions were the most formidable military force known to the ancient world. Amidst the clashing of swords and the march of armored soldiers, there was a dark and fearsome punishment reserved for units showing cowardice or disobedience, the decimation. It's an internal psychological warfare on their own army. Picture a cold morning, the ground misty and the legionaries lined up in silence, the weight of potential doom hanging over them like a thick fog. Every tenth man was singled out from the ranks, chosen by lot, a method leaving one's fate to the whims of chance. These unfortunate souls were then brutally executed by their comrades, a grim task carried out under the watchful eyes of stern centurions. This ruthless discipline ensured loyalty and bravery among the ranks, embedding a sense of unbreakable unity and fear of failure. Decimation wasn't a frequent occurrence, but its mere possibility cast a long shadow over the Roman legions. The practice underlines the harsh realities of ancient warfare and the extreme measures leaders would take to maintain order and effectiveness in their ranks. It's a stark reminder of the sacrifices and the brutal discipline that shaped the history and success of Rome's military might. North Korean Propaganda Efforts In the shadow of the 21st century, amidst the high-tech world of streaming and social media, North Korea employs a method of influence that seems almost out of time yet chillingly effective. Within North Korea's territory, a peculiar gadget stands out in many homes, a government-issued radio that cannot be turned off, only turned down. This radio, a symbol of the state's pervasive propaganda efforts to psychologically tame its citizens. It is a daily reminder of the regime's presence in its citizens' lives, broadcasting glorified tales of the leadership and ideological messages designed to mold unwavering loyalty. The psychological warfare doesn't end within the country. Across the border, massive loudspeakers once dotted the landscape, sending booming broadcasts deep into South Korean territory. These messages were not just of peace or propaganda, but often aimed to demoralize, 
spreading misinformation and glorifying the North's regime while undermining the South and its allies. Leaflets, carried by wind and balloon, would flutter down into South Korean streets and fields, each piece a crafted narrative to sow doubt and discord among its readers. Hannibal's War Elephants Imagine stepping back in time to the year 218 BC, in the midst of the Second Punic War, where the Carthaginian general, Hannibal Barca, embarked on one of the most audacious military campaigns in history. He had a secret weapon that would become the stuff of legends, war elephants. As Hannibal gathered his army to cross the mighty Alps and invade Roman territory, his war elephants were not just beasts of burden, they were integral to his strategy of psychological warfare. Picture these towering, intimidating creatures, each one a living tank, marching through Europe's snow-capped mountains. To the Romans, who had never seen such animals in battle, the sight was utterly alien and terrifying. The psychological impact of these elephants was profound. In battles, their sheer size and strength caused panic among Roman soldiers, who were unaccustomed to fighting such massive foes. The mere presence of these giant creatures could demoralize Roman troops before the fight had even begun. Hannibal's use of elephants was a masterstroke in psychological warfare, showcasing his ingenuity and understanding of the human psyche. These elephants, led by the famous Surus, who was said to be Hannibal's favorite, became symbols of Carthaginian power and Hannibal's military genius. They were not invincible, as the harsh conditions of the Alps and the realities of warfare took their toll, but their impact went beyond their physical abilities. They represented Hannibal's boldness and the lengths to which he would go to challenge Rome. Tokyo Rose, World War II. During World War II, a unique form of psychological warfare emerged from Japan, aimed directly at American soldiers fighting in the Pacific. This operation, spearheaded by English-speaking female broadcasters, utilized radio waves to disseminate propaganda under the guise of Tokyo Rose. Envision a scene from 1943, where in the heart of Tokyo, a woman's voice echoes through the radio, her words carefully crafted to demoralize and dispirit U.S. troops. The operation was cunningly designed. Broadcasts blended news of U.S. casualties and setbacks with nostalgic American music, creating a stark contrast between the grim realities of war and the comforts of home. The psychological tactic was not to confront with brute force, but to erode morale, planting seeds of doubt and homesickness among soldiers, sailors, and airmen stationed far from home. Despite Tokyo Rose's attempts to sway the hearts and minds of American forces, the operation's impact varied. Many soldiers listened out of curiosity, seeking news from the front lines, or simply longing for the sound of a familiar language. The broadcast became a part of the soldiers' daily routine, a peculiar and ironic source of entertainment amidst the backdrop of war. Greetings, everybody. This is your number one enemy, your favorite playmate, Orphan Anne, a radio Tokyo. The little sunbeam whose throat you'd like to touch. We're ready again for a vicious assault on your morale. Seven five minutes of music and news for our friends, I mean our enemies in the South Pacific. 